Today we have our other side of the PvE recap after going through Mythic Plus and seeing the state of the specs in Mythic Plus after two to three weeks past the balance tuning that happened on December the 19th. Today it's time to go and look at the situation in the raid. We are now getting close to the 10.2.5 patch, which is coming out in nine or so days. Unfortunately, as it stands, barring some last minute surprises, we're not actually going to have any significant balance tuning in 10.2.5. There is only a slight change to Preservation Evoker, and that's about it for now. So we're not even we're not even eagerly waiting for the drop of this patch for the balance tuning that will come. There will be some some cool features like the follower dungeons or like dragon riding all over Azeroth and a few other things. But as far as the changes to the meta, changes to the situation in the PvE scene, not really anything is going to be to be changing. So looking at the situation right now at almost two months into this season, this is the situation once more looking at all of the logs in all of the bosses in mythic amir Jassil. once more after we have gone looking at the overall performance of the specs we have to go and look a little bit more in detail because as we all know at this point the general the all bosses overall look of this uh, damage graph can be quite misleading so in this week what we see is that we have arcane mage we also have Devastation Evoker, and then we have two more Warlock specs joining the top half of the results. We also have Destro and Affliction. We were used to seeing Demo this season doing well, but not quite as much the other two. So these are the newer entries in terms of good performances. It's worth mentioning, of course, that every one of these specs we just mentioned was buffed. Uh, three weeks ago, in the last round of balance tuning, all three mage specs were buffed. The two warlock specs not named demo were buffed and also the devastation evoker was buffed as well. So it's good to see that they are having an impact in them performing better. But when we look at something like this, we also have to go over as usual. Is this true? Or are we getting baited? Is this just a lie from the overall all bosses results? Or can we see it once we go and check their performance boss by boss? You can start from the, the easier one, the weaker ones that perhaps matter the least, like Null Root. And we do see, at least on Null Root, Arcane Mage doing very well. You do see uh, Devastation Evoker being in the middle of the pack and even Affliction Warlock being quite high. The only one of the four that isn't performing as well is Destruction Warlock, which is quite lower down. Then you move to a boss with a few more adds a few more room for padding on AOE situations and now affliction is still quite high but devastation and destruction are in the in the middle of the pack to slightly bottom half meanwhile once more arcane mage is doing very well volcaros is a pure single target fight so there is no padding in here there is no AOE to be done arcane is in the top seven devastation is doing quite badly together with the other two warlock specs Council, there is some cleave here, so it's not surprising to see Destruction doing much better. Devastation is also in the top half, and this time it's Arcane who is doing worse, given the, the style of this, uh, of this cleave type of boss, which doesn't really favor Arcane very much. This doesn't last long for Arcane, because on Laudar, Arcane is back to being the highest damage, as well as Destruction doing very well and then Affliction and Devastation are in the middle of the pack. This is continued on Nimue, where you have Destruction again doing very well. It's the only one of the specs this time that is outperforming the other three in the bottom half. And lastly, you have Smolderon, where once more you have Arcane Mage doing very well. This time it's Affliction doing very well, but Devastation and Destruction are not doing nearly as well. So when you go all the way back to the average results, you can basically say that Arcane is here legit. Arcane is here because on most bosses, they are doing much better and they are towards the top on the majority of the bosses. Meanwhile, when it comes to these three other specs, Destro, Affliction and, uh, and Devastation, it's likely more due to AOE instances of damage for Devastation and for Destruction, cleave instances of damage, things like Council, things like Larodar and even Igira, more so than pure single target fights like Small Devon or like Volcarus. So the increase in performance seems to be more tied to a certain type of damage profile for these three specs 
compared to Arcane, who instead seems to be here because they are doing genuinely better overall after being buffed. Good to know that the Blizzard's favoritisms of Mage continues after checking out the growth in power as a powerful meta pick in Mythic Plus now for Fire Mage. Now you have the luxury to pick up a different spec in your class for mages when it comes to the raid in Arcade. It's still, it, you can still see the growth, the increased damage of Devastation and Affliction and Destruction but not nearly as much uh, as Arcane and also not nearly for as many bosses as, um, as Arcane Mage. We can still see though that tier lists and rankings are not really quite, quite believing this growth in power for these specs besides Arcane. You see here Arcane is rising quite a bit more in, in, in how much it's valued compared to Affliction, compared to Destruction, and compared to Devastation. You can change the tier list. In this case, it's, it's even lower. Now, Arcane is, is, is even further down together with Devastation, as well as Affliction, as well as Destruction. Once more, we have Devastation, Affliction, Destruction, and Arcane all towards the bottom. Even if, even if, if we actually go back and look, you see the damage of Arcane, being higher than BM, you see the damage of Affliction being higher than Havoc, you change the tier list, you see the damage of Devastation being higher than BM, you see the damage of Destruction matching or beating the damage of Red Paladin, for example. That is quite visible when you switch from the popularity of the specs to the throughput. Suddenly, if you just look purely at the damage, you have Devastation being very high, you have Arcane being high, Affliction being much higher compared to their popularity. Because it's always worth pointing out as we check the popularity on all bosses that we are talking about specs not really being played much. You have Affliction, dead last. You have Destruction in the bottom eight, in the bottom nine specs together with Devastation. The only one that is a bit more shared amongst the class of Mage is Arcane who is just dead in the middle. Also because, of course, it is sharing playtime with Fire, which is being played quite a bit, and also sharing playtime with Frost, which is the most played of mages. Kind of the same as the situation for both Destruction and Affliction, who are being right now dominated by the popularity of Demo at the moment. So for, for these two specs to, to continue to be played more and also to see just how much of this, these results improving this week are true, are real, are consistent, you would have to see more and more demo locks, maybe for example on farm, on re-clears to try something new, you know, switching over to Destro, switching over to Affliction, to get more logs, to get more results over to these two other specs. But for now, that's the, that's the initial uh, two cents on the, the changes in performance of these specs. Arcane is more or less legit all around, whereas for Destro, Affliction and Devastation, it's likely more to do with their AoE damage or cleave damage on certain bosses doing much better and not nearly as much on their pure single target damage. Take, you know, Volcaros, where they are all at the bottom, for example. And then the rest of the rise of these specs might be because of some slightly unreliable results, like for example, having Devastation as the second best spec on Tindra and even Affliction in the top half. But then you go and look at the logs on Tindral, and you see Affliction has one log, and Devastation has eight logs. That also helps getting spiked up in your old bosses' results, because of these very few logs on bosses without many kills. That is the situation right now in the raid. Just for fun, we can just take a glance, a peek at also the survivability of the specs to point out all of these clowns dying way more than the specs at the top. We can also see it a different way over here to check over at the deaths of the specs. Looking at both kills and wipes, or even just wipes for example, just to see who, who breaks your pool the most. You can look at the death percentage and we do have more or less you know similar results down here. The Druids, Priest, Hunter, Evoker, Devastation and Preservation are dying more than a few other specs known for their tankiness, like for example, Warlocks. Warlocks are quite uh, quite sturdy and reliable and resistant. What is perhaps meme-worthy? I know it plays on the stereotype, but Havoc Demon Hunter being so high in deaths is quite, quite, quite unwarranted, given their tankiness, given their high leech, their high self-sustain, their multiple defensives, and don't forget, after the rework, they now have also a pretty easy to take 
immunity, yet they continue to die quite a lot. To be fair, that's also the same for assassination, especially when you look at sub and outlaw compared to the death rate of assassination, that's quite weird. But skipping past the situation when it comes to the deaths, we also have to look at something else for, for this week, which is the, the healing changes. Healing have been touched also by the by the results when it comes to the, the balance tuning of three weeks ago in particular the buffs given to holy priest the nerfs given to miss river monk yeah technically when we look at these results it doesn't look like much of anything is changing miss river is still very high up holy priest is still very low down and then the rest of the four to five healers are just a big blob in the middle we continue to see when it comes to the popularity the split between the top three being mist weaver monk and discipline priest being upwards of 30 percent more popular than the other healers we have we have them down here as well you see the 20 ish thousand all close to each other but it's worth pointing out i don't want credit for this but i called this over a month ago over time Holy Priest was going to be matching and then passing Discipline. Now we are only not even 10% dividing these two, these two specs. It's uh, that the presence of Holy Priest will continue to rise due to how much less bursty healing is required in the raid, meaning the effectiveness of Discipline Priest will go further down, meaning the continued uh, throughput, consistent healing of Holy Priest will go up, and also because it's more chill and it's more laid back, to heal compared to discipline so it's more it's more relaxed when you're farming the raid for example so we are bound to see holy priest continuing to rise and eventually pass discipline priest so what that also means is we are bound to see worse and worse results for discipline because more and more better players will go down to play holy so holy will also increase its results not because it's being buffed but because better players are playing holy and discipline will get worse in results not because they're being nerfed but because more good players are going to play holy that's a, a classic at this time of the season we still see them being regarded as quite high still below mr vermonk changing tier list does paint things in a slightly different picture here we have a big blob of five specs all very close to each other even down here talking purely about throughput you have these specs approximately one four and six thousand hps apart we're talking about one to three percent healing done apart from each other the only gap is from Miss Weaver, which is far higher up remember also that Miss Weaver has been nerfed twice already this season so was discipline these were the two specs nerfed by somewhere around 10 to 12 percent healing done for Miss Weaver and about six or so percent healing nerf done to discipline so these are the results post nerfs for both of these specs and then also unfortunately you might say these are the results post buffs at the moment for holy holy priest has been buffed by over 10 percent healing and they are still a solid 15 percent healing behind mist weaver who was also nerfed by 10 percent that that shows you the gap that existed between these two specs at the start of the season and that it is still quite visible right now a couple of months into into season three it's still worth pointing out that at this point though in previous times you might have seen at least one or sometimes two healers being almost completely dead almost completely abandoned whereas now there is a much more much more healthy spread of healers in terms of options even in the raid let me let me pick up some receipts this is week this is week seven this was week seven so almost two months in season two of uh, of dragonflight and these are the healer popularity picks in the mythic obviously holy priest was op but then again you look at the numbers of discipline and you look at the number of mist weaver these are not just half as popular as the rest these are twice or three or even four times less popular than the other healers we can go back to week six of season one and this was the popularity of the healers once more you see that the ones at the bottom aren't just only half as popular as the ones at the top they are they are a third or a fourth or a fifth as popular so compared to these numbers the popularity of healers right now like this one is very healthy is very healthy compared to what we had gotten used to in the previous seasons of dragonflight 
So, yes, there is still some unbalancing to be had. Mist River is still too strong, likely Holy Priest, and at this point, perhaps Rashto Druid and Preservation might be bumped by a slight bit, but compared to what we have gotten used to in this expansion, it's going very well, as far as healers are concerned in the raid. So as far as the recap of this week is concerned when it comes to, to the raid, we have, of course, still waiting on more on more conclusive results in terms of the performance of, of Tindral damage. We still don't have nearly as many logs, obviously, for, for this boss. You get you get to see some ideas, of course, with, with Demo having so many so many logs and doing so well. For example, you get kind of an idea of you know them being quite strong. Same goes for Havok, having the second highest logs and them still doing well. So you still have so you still have good good ideas about those specs, but for all the others, the logs start being too scarce to get an idea of the performance on that boss. As we pointed out, the overall results showed the growth of four different specs, which then we went over and just analyzed whether or not that growth was real, was legit, or was perhaps a little bit sketchy in terms of how they got to, to show that that increase in damage for affliction destruction devastation and arcane mage that was what we had in terms of raid recap for today on this uh sunday yes sunday so with this done and out of the way we are now going to leave each other for whatever is left of this weekend this point a few sad hours so Thank you guys, of course, for, for watching and for helping the growth of the channel, which can be, as usual, done completely for free. You can like and comment down below, as well as subscribe down the video as well. With these uh, things out of the way, thank you guys again for watching. See you guys tomorrow. And in the meantime, okay, okay, it, it's continuing to rain. I was just making sure I had my comfy background sound still going on.